Ty Bartow in with another edition of Player Profile. This time we're back in the Leopard community of Louisville, Ohio, with one of their best, their highlight reel, plenty of slams this season, Mr. Braden Gross, the junior from the Leopards. Braden, how we doing today, brother? Yeah, how are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. And you're not having a bad season yourself, BG. You're at, well, averaging almost a double-double, 16 points, just under 10 rebounds a game. Talk about the year you're having. What do you attribute the the successful season you're having to? Uh, just team play. I feel like it all just comes down to that we all play together. We all know each other great, and we all know each other's strengths, so we can just focus on doing our own thing, you know, and being the best that we can be for the team. Talked about uh, we talked with uh, Hayden Agro and he talked about the uh, the alley oop passes, and some of the the dunks that you've been able to throw down too with uh, with the help of him and and Bo. Talk about the the electricity that goes throughout that gymnasium when you're able to throw it down in front of yeah. that Louisville home crowd. Yeah. Especially uh, especially Friday night, last Friday night, it was I was so loud I couldn't even hear myself thinking. And you know, timeout called right after. I feel like that just that gets everybody going, even our team. So. It's, it's really electric. And you're able to slam it down, too. And, I mean, you've done it plenty of times this season. Do you have a first dunk that you remember? What's the first dunk that you remember having in-game action? Do you do you have that first one in the memory bank? I, I have uh, – I don't have my first make. I, I remember trying. We were at Alliance. I was on JV at the like, very beginning of the year, and I was just trying to dunk. I tried, like, three times, and I didn't, I didn't make any. But th- that's really my first memory. You talk about just the excitement that, that echoes throughout the gymnasium, but it's also the season you guys are having. And I, I talked a little bit with Hayden about this too. From your perspective, what is that like playing in front of that leopard home crowd? Because, I mean, you guys are undefeated, so it's amping you up, obviously. Yeah. What's it like from your perspective playing in front of this this Louisville leopard home crowd? Uh, I try not to focus too much on the crowd, you know, trying to get in my own head. But when I do take a glance around, I mean, the gym's packed and everybody's there watching and supporting us. It's really amazing. I know you guys get locked into your game, too. And, I mean, it's, it's why you guys are one of the best of the best in the entire state, in my opinion. But... How hard is it to kind of block out the, the noise of the crowd? Or are you guys just so focused in the game? Does it come easier than, than may, some may think? Yeah, I think it definitely comes easier than than it seems or it, you know, would be. But, you know, once warm-ups start, I think we're dialed in and stuff like that. And, you know, we'll look around here and there, but I feel like it's all all focused on game. You talk about you as a basketball player. I kind of want to go back to the the earliest memories you have and some of the first chapters in your basketball uh, your basketball story. What's come up, some of those earliest memories? When when do you remember kind of getting involved in the sport? Uh, you know, like way back. We going way back. We're going way back, man. I want first chapter. Okay, uh, <laughs> was probably obviously a little kid playing in my own house on the mini hoop when. I mean, I personally don't remember from pictures my parents have shown me. I'm sitting there on the mini hoop on the railing going down our stairs. We're just shooting on the hoop with my entire family just sitting there with the mini ball. I feel like that's my first memory. And then my first actual memory is probably, I don't know, fourth grade. I remember Coach Nick was my coach and Coach Pete. I remember playing at Talmadge. That's, those are my first real memories. Talk about some of your favorite memories now in your basketball story. Do you have a few that that kind of stick out in your mind? Yeah, uh, probably the field house, you know, or not the field house, the civic center with the all white out student section. That was that was easy. My favorite memory with freshman year. That was that was crazy. Talking about you constantly trying to improve yourself as a player, too. You talked about those freshmen here and JV trying to throw down the dunks and, and having a hard time to where you are now, almost a double-double and a constant uh, yam machine, right? Yeah. So you talk, you talk about the, the progression, too. What's the work look like from freshman year into junior year to where you are now, too? What did it take for you to go from that to this? Uh, I think it's AU. And, you know, summer leagues, off time, you know, me coming in the gym on the weekend, uh, just trying to get in as much extra work as I can while, you know, staying fresh and not trying to overdo myself. So a good balance between off time and basketball. You try to have that balance, too. What do you try to utilize in your off time, your relaxing time to kind of take a take a step back when you need to take a step back mentally from basketball? Definitely, definitely trying to get, you know, Epsom salt baths, 
rolling out, stretching, stuff like that. Honestly, just sitting on the couch, watching some TV is always nice. Video games, just doing nothing a lot of times is what helps. What's uh, what's some of the favorite uh, go-to shows or, or maybe YouTube channels or whatever it is that you may watch? I'm not, I've been watching, I've been watching some car detailing YouTube videos lately. Just, you know, the satisfying, the how to get started tutorials and stuff like that. That's been, that's been pretty nice. Netflix is always a go-to also. What's some of the, the, the Netflix, uh, the Netflix recommendations for you? I'm watching Breaking Bad right now. It's pretty good. I'm getting oh, a lot. No it's been a minute since I watched anything other than that. No, Breaking Bad is top tier. One of my favorites as well. I, I can't disagree with you there. You talk about that too. When you need to lock into a game though, when it is game day. And I mean, I know sometimes game day starts for people way early in the morning. Does it start early for you? How do you lock in before a, a big game? Uh, usually game days, most game days are on the week, weekdays or whatever. So we just have school, we're just regular, go throughout the day like normal. And then we get to go home. I head home and get some food. I sit down and play some video games, and then we're back at the school around like 4, 4.15. We got film, and then we shoot around at the gym, and then we warm up with the JV before, and I feel like that's when I start getting dialed in. You talk about some of those younger guys, too, and the JV that you kind of get to participate with. Yeah. What's your advice to those younger guys that maybe see Braden Gross throwing down these, <laughs> these nasty dunks, too, and they say they want to get to that point? What's your advice to these younger players? Uh, probably just like – more than basketball, you know, lifting and speed and agility. And it's not all as like great as it seems. You got to put in the work outside of the gym, in the weight room and stuff like that. This upcoming tournament run, I know, is going to be exciting for a lot of you guys. You guys are quite literally going to see your draw in, in, a, in, a, in a couple hours here, in less than an hour, I think. So you talk about this upcoming tournament run. Where do you? How are you managing the emotions going into it? I know you guys try to stay one game at a time. Are you trying to stay focused at the next game, too, while also managing the excitement of that the tournament naturally brings? Well, you know, it's a tournament, so we can always, like, guess what team we're going to play, but we never really know until the games are played. So I guess we just focus on the game we know we have ahead of us, and then from there we work on and watch film to see what team we're playing next and, you know, what, what they do and stuff like that. So when you guys get a big win like you guys have every single game after at Louisville, too, do you have a go-to spot to eat or do you have a go-to meal when you get home? What's the what's the go-to – post game meal for Braden Gross. I'm not I don't not really a go to but it's Wendy's has been like the savior. Old. Yeah. What what is it from Wendy's? Is it the 4 for 4 or the $5 biggie bag? That's that's the You got to get the biggie bag with the chicken sandwich on the side. That's the way. That's the way too. What's the, do you go any any sauces for the for the nugs too or you go yeah. just yep, sweet and sour for the nugs and the fries. No doubt. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Too. Maybe a little frosty dip the fries in, but is that the spot for all the leopards, or is that just Braden uh, Gross? Is, is Wendy's getting slammed no. after after wins? No, I feel like Wendy's is a spot for Louisville. It is. That's that's the Louisville. Yep. You talk about the Louisville community though, and the, the the culture of the leopards, and we. I talked with Coach Siegfried about it. It's it's all sports, not just basketball. You guys yeah. show up. Being a part of this leopard community for as long as you you have been. What have you taken away of what it means to be not just a, a player, but to be also a fan of the other teams that when you need to support the girls teams too? I mean, yeah. I see guys everywhere too. What does it take to be the fan that you need to be for Lewis? Like, it's just like when you're out on the court and you realize like the student section and the fans, you know, how much they bring to the game. I feel like you just, you understand what it's like to have that, that backup and that, that big uh, fan section and you just try to repay. Let's look at some of the role models that you've had throughout uh, throughout your life. Do you have uh, do you have a maybe a player that you've looked up to, or maybe someone that's had it, an impact on uh, on your playing career? Who's some of the role models you want to shout out? Uh, definitely Coach Siegfried. Obviously, I've been playing AU with him longer than I've been at Louisville, so he's always been you know up there. And my parents, for sure, uh, probably. Probably goes back to Coach Nick and Coach Pete, like I mentioned earlier. They just really started off my basketball career. I feel like I have to attribute some of my success to them. I also want to give you a chance to to shout out that support system, those that are around you, those that have been there for you, those that are cheering you on from uh, from the stands games. Yeah, my definitely my family, coaching staff, and you know Jesus as well. 
but mostly just uh, fans as well. I mean, honestly, just as much as anybody else, but. Well, good, Braden, we are absolutely rooting for you here at YSN Live. We're so excited for the upcoming tournament run for the Leopards. We're so excited to see what you're going to be able to showcase during the tournament, too, with your, your own talent as well. Okay. Having a great season. We're wishing you nothing but the best for continued success in the tournament. Thank you. As this has been an edition of Player Profile with the man with the slams, Braden Gross at Louisville.